Hello there, welcome back. This is now week 14. So we are officially right before the final test. This week, we will study about three quarters of unit 13. As you can see, we will be looking at using can and have to. We will be talking about expressing ability. I can drive a car. I can't or I cannot fly an airplane. We will be talking about occupations. I am a teacher, so I can teach. Or should I say, I can teach, so I am a teacher. We will be talking about looking for a job. I can act, so I want to be an actor. We will also be expressing obligation, which is have to. I have to do my homework, so I can't go to the party. And how about inviting? Make giving an invitation to attend something. So those are some of the things we will be talking about in Unit 13. At the end of this lecture, we will spend some time talking about your final test, what it is, what it isn't, how similar it will be to your midterm test or different from your midterm test. But right now, let's look at Unit 13 and go to the next page where we have vocabulary. On page 117, we have 13 pictures. And the vocabulary here is jobs. Number one, actor. Number one, actor. Number two, actress. Although these days, a lot of people refer to male and female as actor. Sometimes male actor, female actor, or simply he is an actor, she is an actor. But there is the vocabulary actor and actress. Number three, baker. He is a baker. Number four, he looks similar, but his job is a chef. He is a chef. Bakers focus on baking, bread, cakes, pastries, whereas chefs use a lot more different types of food. Chefs design menus. They think about how different food works together. Number five, we have a construction worker. She is a construction worker. Number six, she is a dancer. Maybe you could say ballet dancer, but there are different types of dancing. Number seven, we have mechanic. Mechanic. He fixes cars. Number eight, we have salesperson. We used to say, have vocabulary such as salesman, saleswoman, but now we are gender neutral. Gender does not change the job. It is salesperson sometimes called sales representative, sales rep, but in this book, it's sales person. Number nine, we have secretary. And it's nice to see that it is a male secretary. Number 10, we have a singer. She is a singer. Number 11, superintendent. Superintendent takes care of the building. In the last unit, we had custodian, the people who take care of the building. Superintendent is usually for apartment buildings. He is a superintendent. Number 12, like me, she is a teacher. And finally, number 13, truck driver. He is a truck driver. I think the main vocabulary here should be driver, 
because there are bus drivers, taxi drivers, truck drivers, limousine drivers. There are lots of different jobs where you drive. So we will be using some of that vocabulary to talk about ability, can and can't. Let's move on to the first page of questions. So first we have the structure can and can't, sometimes said in British English can't. I can, I can't. I can, I can't. For example, I can sing or I can't sing. He can, she can, it can, we can, you can, they can sing. Or can't, cannot, or can't. I can't, he can't, she can't, it can't, we can't, they can't, you can't. Or can't. One thing I think about uh, as a British person is... Usually, there is no difference in vocabulary, right? Lift, elevator, water, water. But many times when people try to say, I can do something, positive, yes, I can. And then they say, oh, wait, I can't. The T, can't, can sometimes be very weak. And that can give people the wrong answer, right? I can't sing. I can sing. I can't sing. Can you hear the difference? But the British version of can't actually sounds different. Right? Can and can't. There's more of an R sound in there. So, anyhow, I will not tell you how to speak. If you prefer American English, great. If you like to... Follow British English Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock, then can't. It's fine. Enjoy. You decide. So, can you sing? Yes, I can. No, I can't. No, I can't. So, we will be talking about the question can you? And in the answer, we will use both can and can't. Can't. So the example here is, can you speak Hungarian? No, I can't, but I can speak Romanian. Mm -hmm. Can you speak Hungarian? No, I can't, but I can speak Romanian. Ooh, interesting. Personally, I can't speak Hungarian or Romanian. Anyway, let's have a look at some more examples of what people can and can't do. Number one, let's use this as an example. So here we have Betty. Betty is in a bus and Betty is in a taxi. One of them, she looks much more comfortable. The question is, can Betty drive a bus? Can Betty drive a bus? Hmm, looking at the picture, no, she can't. But she can drive a taxi. Can Betty drive a bus? No, she can't. But she can drive a taxi. So from number two, I will read you the question, number two to number eight, and then we'll go through the answers together. Number two, can Fred cook Italian food? Can Fred cook Italian food? Number three, can they ski? Can they ski? Number four, can you, and this is you, can you skate? 
Can you skate? Number five. Can Roger use a cash register? Can Roger use a cash register? These days, sometimes called POS, P-O-S, point of sale. Can Roger use a POS or point of sale, a cash register? Number six. Can Judy and Donna play baseball? Can Judy and Donna play baseball? Number seven. Can Rita play the trumpet? Can Rita play the trumpet? And number eight. Can Marvin paint pictures? Can Marvin paint pictures? Okay. Hopefully you were able to make some sentences, some answers to those questions. Let's have a look at the answers together. Back to number two. Can Fred cook Italian food? Well, looking at the smoke, the pasta, the meatballs are burning. The answer is no, he cannot. But he can cook Chinese food. Looks like he is using a Chinese cookbook and he looks comfortable. He can cook Chinese food. How about number three? The two people. Can they ski? No, they can't. No, they can't. But they can swim. We can see them in the water and they look very comfortable swimming. Yes, they can swim. Number four. Can you skate? No, I can't. No, I can't, but I can ski. Yes, this is not a true answer for me. Actually, I can skate. Not like Kim Yona, but I can ice skate. I can inline skate, but I can't ski. I tried snowboarding once. Not bad, I guess, but difficult. I can skate, but I can't ski. In this picture, no, I can't skate, but I can ski. Number five, Roger. Can Roger use a cash register? No, he can't, but he can use, and what is that? It's a calculator. He can use a calculator. How about number six? Can Judy and Donna play baseball? No, they can't. But they can play baseball. Huh? Sorry? No, that's a mistake. One more time. Can Judy and Donna play baseball? No, they can't. But they can play soccer. They can play soccer well, but they can't play baseball. Number seven, we have Rita. Can Rita play the trumpet? No, she can't but she can play the drums. She can play the drums. And number eight, can Marvin paint pictures? Well, not, not very good pictures. They are not Picasso. Um, no, he can't, but he can paint houses. He can paint houses. At the top of page 119, 
Here we have an example of talking about somebody's job and their skill or their ability. So in the example, it says, can Jack fix cars? Can he fix cars? Of course he can. He fixes cars every day. He's a mechanic. One problem I have with this is, uh, can all mechanics fix cars? Do all mechanics fix cars every day? When we say, of course, it implies that you should know. You, of course. Right? Is it hot today? Of course, it's summer. Right? There is some understanding that the situation is this way, so we say, of course. So a, I feel like a better answer could be, can Jack fix cars? Yes, he can. Because he fixes cars every day. He's a mechanic. That's just my opinion. So either way, of course he can, or yes, he can. Both work okay. Let's have a look at another example. So number one, we have Michael. Can Michael type? And it tells us his job is secretary. So using the model from the example one, can Michael type? Yes, he can. He is a secretary. He types every day. Or, yes, he can. He types every day. He is a secretary. Can Michael type? Yes, he can. He types every day. He's a secretary. Okay, so from number two, I will ask you the questions. You try to answer them, and then we'll go back and check the answers together. Okay, let's have a look at question two. Can Barbara teach? Can she teach? Can Barbara teach? Number three. Can Oscar bake pies and cakes? Can Oscar bake pies and cakes? Can he bake pies and cakes? Number four. Can Jane drive a truck? Can she drive a truck? Number five. Can Stanley cook? I think we remember Stanley from his international restaurant again. Can Stanley cook? Can he cook? Number six. Can Claudia sing? Can Claudia sing? Can she sing? Number seven. Can Bruce and Helen dance? Can Bruce and Helen dance? Can they dance? Number eight. Can Arthur act? Can Arthur act? Can he act? Number nine, can Elizabeth and Catherine act? Can they act? That is the last one, number nine. So let's go back to number two and have a look at the answer. Number two, can Barbara teach? Of course she can. She teaches every day. She is a teacher. Yes, she can. She teaches every day. She is a teacher. That's the answer. Number three. Can he bake pies and cakes? Of course he can. He bakes pies and cakes every day. He is a baker. Yes, he can. 
He bakes every day. He is a baker. Number four. Can Jane drive a truck? Yes, she can. Or of course she can. She drives a truck every day. She is a truck driver. Yes, she can. She drives every day. She's a truck driver. Number five. Can Stanley cook? Of course he can. He cooks every day. He is a chef. We could even say, of course he can. He cooks different countries' food every day. He is an international chef. Number six. Can Claudia sing? Of course she can. She sings every day. She is a singer. Number seven. Can Bruce and Helen dance? Of course they can. They dance every day. They are dancers. Yes, they can. They dance every day. They are dancers. Number eight. Can Arthur act? Of course he can. He acts every day. He is an actor. He is an actor. Yes, he can. He acts every day. He is an actor. Number nine changes the gender. Can Elizabeth and Catherine act? Of course they can. They act every day. They are actresses. Or, of course they can. They act every day. They are actors. Arthur in number eight is an actor. He acts every day. They are actors. They act every day. Okay, so that's the last one. So again, something to keep in mind about these questions is the subject and the verb. I teach every day. She teaches every day. He acts every day. They act every day. So these verbs, and this subject and verb agreement will be important in your testing. Okay. Using the correct language in your answers will be important. And we'll talk about that more when we finish this, this week's lecture. We will talk about your midterm test. Let's move on to the next page 120. So what do we see here? Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six people. Two of them are a couple or two of them are together as a team, but they are all looking for a job. They all want employment. We can see above their head thought bubbles. They're thinking about their skills. For example, the first lady, she can type. The next gentleman, he can paint. The third lady, she can use tools. The next gentleman, he can sell or he can deal with customers. The last two, they, they can sing. So I wonder what kind of jobs they want. Let's find out. This is a reading activity. So under the picture, we have the story. Let's read together. Many people are sitting in the reception room at the ACE Employment Service. 
They are all looking for work, and they are hoping they can find jobs today. Natalie is looking for a job as a secretary. She can type, she can file, and she can use business software on the computer. William is looking for a job as a building superintendent. He can paint walls, he can repair locks, and he can fix stoves and refrigerators. Sandra is looking for a job as a construction worker. She can use tools, she can operate equipment, and she can build things. Nick is looking for a job as a salesperson. He can talk to customers, he can use a cash register, and he can take inventory. Stephanie and Tiffany are looking for jobs as actresses. They can sing, they can dance, and they can act. Good luck, everybody. We hope you can find the jobs you are looking for. I wonder if they will get their dream jobs. So, is there any vocabulary in this that might be tricky for you? The jobs, we have secretary, superintendent, construction worker, salesperson, and actresses. They all seem pretty straightforward. We talked about using a cash register, a POS, a point of sale, where the staff takes your card or money and you buy something, that point, a cash register. Take inventory is about counting, counting products in your shop. Uh, if your shop, like, for example, a supermarket, they sell ramen every day, somebody has to count how many ramyun they have in the shop. That's called taking inventory. Anything else? What about using equipment and operating equipment or operate equipment and use tools? I think they use tools, things like a drill, hammer, and, and operate equipment means like the driving of the bulldozer, the, dr the dump truck, a forklift truck, that kind of operating equipment. Okay, so we'll use this information from these people to role play a conversation. This is on the next page. So Natalie, William, Sandra, Nick, Stephanie, and Tiffany are having their interviews. So A is the interviewer at Ace Employment Services, and B is the member of staff. Let's read the example together. What's your name? Natalie Kramer. Nice to meet you. Tell me, Natalie. What kind of job are you looking for? I'm looking for a job as a secretary. Tell me about your skills. What can you do? I can type, I can file, and I can use business software on the computer. Very good. You are very qualified, Natalie Kramer. I hope we can give you the job. That's the end of that conversation. How about if we used William as the next person? I will use the book to give me information. So, what's your name? My name is William. Nice to meet you. Tell me, William, what kind of job are you looking for? I'm looking for a job as a superintendent.
as a building superintendent. Tell me about your skills. What can you do? I can paint walls. I can repair locks. And I can fix stoves and refrigerators. Well, that's very good, William. I hope we can give you the job. Okay, so your responsibility now is to use this model and practice the conversation using Nick, Stephanie, and Tiffany. It's not common to have a two-person interview. For example, Stephanie and Tiffany want to be actresses together. So you can practice the conversation one by one. First Stephanie, then Tiffany, or do it together. We want to be actresses. We can sing, etc. So we'll leave that up to you. The next activity is a listening activity. You are listening and can you hear or what do you hear? Choose the word you hear. Do you hear can or can't? Can or can't? I will use the American version of can't here because that is more testing for you. Okay, so chapter 13, page 121. Number one, I can speak Spanish. I can speak Spanish. Number two, he can't paint. He can't paint. Number three. She can type. She can type. Number four. We can't build things. We can't build things. Number five. They can use tools. They can use tools. And number six, we can't operate equipment. We can't operate equipment. Okay, how about the answers? Number one, I can speak Spanish. This is actually true. I can. Hola, buenos dias. Hablo español. I can speak Spanish. The answer is A. Can. Number two. He can't paint. Can't. The answer is B. He can't paint. That's right. He can't paint. Number three. She can type. She can type. The answer is A. Can. She can type. Number four. We can't build things. The answer is B, can't. We can't build things. Number five, they can use tools. They can, the answer is A, can. They can use tools. Number five, they can use tools. Number six, the last one. We can't operate equipment. The answer is B, can't. They can't operate equipment. Okay, the second listening activity, what can they do? Listen and choose what each person can do. So this is the activity. Number one, he can't file, but he can type. He can't file, he can type. Number two, they can cook, they can't bake. They can cook, they can't bake. Number three. She can repair locks. She can't repair stoves. She can repair locks. She can't repair stoves. Number four. I can't drive a truck. I can drive a bus. I can't drive a truck. I can drive a bus. Number five, 
He can teach French. He can't teach English. He can teach French. He can't teach English. And number six, we can take inventory. We can't paint. So you're circling the answer of what they can do, not can't. So number one, he can't file. He can type. The answer is B. He can type. B. Type. Number two. They can cook. They can't bake. The answer is A. Cook. They can cook. Number three. She can repair locks. She can't repair stoves. The answer is A. Repair locks. Number four. I can't drive a truck. I can drive a bus. The answer is B. I can drive a bus. Number five. He can teach French. He can't teach English. The answer is A. Teach French. He can teach French. And the last one, number six. We can take inventory. We can't paint. The answer is A. Again, we can take inventory. Very good. So that is the listening activity. What is next? We have an example of obligation. Okay. So here we have a picture of Herbert. Herbert is having a party. He's all alone, just his dog. And people cannot go to his party, can't go to his party. Why not? Because they have to do something. I have to work. We have to work. You have to work. They have to work. Or he, she, it has to work. He has to work. Mr. Kim has to work. Miss Lee has to work. The monkey has to work. I have to. We have to. He, she has to. So as it says, Herbert is depressed. Poor Herbert. He's having a party today, but his friends can't go to his party. They're all busy. Why? What are they doing? Example one. Can you go to Herbert's party? No, I can't. I have to work. Oh dear. No, I can't. I have to work. How about Michael? Can Michael go to Herbert's party? No, he can't. He has to go to the doctor. He must be sick. So, here is the question for you. It shows you the subject, you and Tom, and then it gives you the reason. Fix our car. So, number one, can you and Tom go to Herbert's party? Can you and Tom go to Herbert's party? Number two, can Susan go to Herbert's party? Can Susan go to Herbert's party? Number three, can your children go to Herbert's party? Can they go to Herbert's party? Number four. Can John go to Herbert's party? Can John go to Herbert's party? Number five. Your parents. Can your parents go to Herbert's party? Let's go back and look at the answers. So number one, you and Tom. Can you and Tom go to Herbert's party? So the prompt fix our car would be, no, we can't. We have to fix our car. Is that a good reason not to go to Herbert's party? Maybe it's really important. Maybe tomorrow is an emergency. You need the car. So today, we have to fix our car. Fair enough. 
Number two. Can Susan go to Herbert's party? No, she can't. No, she can't. She has to go to the dentist. She has to go to the dentist. Number three. Can your children go to Herbert's party? No, they can't. They have to do their homework. Of course, homework is more important than a party, right? Yes. Can't do the homework later or tomorrow. Nope. They can't go to Herbert's party. They have to do their homework right now. Number four. Can John go to Herbert's party? No, he can't. And this is the best. This is the best one. Can John go to Herbert's party? No, he can't. He has to wash his clothes. Poor Herbert. Imagine, maybe John is his good friend. Sorry, Herbert. I can't come to your party. I have to wash my clothes. Your clothes are more important than my party? Mm. Sorry, yes. Oh, dear. And number five. Can your parents go to Herbert's party? No, they can't. They have to clean their apartment. Another wonderful reason. What is maybe the worst reason that's not here? Can you go to Herbert's party? No, I can't. I have to wash my hair. If somebody ever gives you that reason, you know they really don't want to go to your event. Anyway, that is the model. Right? Can you do something? No, I can't because I have to do something. No, he can't. He has to do something. No, she can't. She has to do something. No, we can't. We have to do something. So that is the structure that you have to use. So that takes us to the end of Unit 13. It's not the very end of Unit 13, but because final test is coming, I think that is enough for you to be practicing. Let's talk a little bit about your final test. So, this will be a speaking test. We will be using Flipgrid. I will be asking you questions in Flipgrid. I will be asking you questions from all the units we have studied so far. That would be Unit 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and today, 13. When I watch your Flipgrid video, I will be listening carefully, very carefully, to your response. What I expect is for you to use the structure that we've studied in class. The purpose of the Flipgrid videos were to help you to practice the structures that we used in the lessons. Some of you gave short answers, and there is no punishment for that. But those of you who practiced carefully, those of you who used the models in the book, those of you who used full sentences, then you will get the best grades in your test. I expect you to use what we studied in the classroom. It's not a race to get the shortest final test. If your video re needs 10 minutes to answer the questions, no problem. Use full sentences. Give me all of the detail in the answer. That is the way that you can get your best score.
I will make another video giving you some more details about the final test. The best thing for you to do is to go back, look at the questions I asked you in the Flipgrid videos, watch the online lectures again, use your book, look at the example questions and the example answer. What I ask you will be from the book. Like the midterm test, the pictures will be different. The characters, the people will be different. But the structure, the question structure, the answer structure is exactly from the book. So one more time to get the best score from your final test. Practice the questions we used in the lecture. Practice the questions I asked you in the Flipgrid video. And practice giving full answers. Okay. If you have any questions, leave them in the YouTube video, in the comment section of this video. You can email me, of course. You can pass me a message through Jogyonim. We have two weeks until the final test. It will be an online video. You will have a short amount of time. Last time you had a long time to answer the questions. This time you will have a shorter time between watching my video and answering your questions. So again, I said last time, but it wasn't the last time. Please practice the questions and the answers in the online videos, in the Flipgrid videos, and in the book. That is the best way that you will give your best answer. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Good luck with all your study. Take care. Bye-bye.